Have you ever wondered how submarines work? Picture this, a massive, steel-hulled vessel slipping beneath the waves invisible to the world above. It's a marvel of engineering, navigating the deep sea with grace and precision. How do these underwater behemoths manage to operate under such extreme conditions? What intricate mechanisms and systems allow them to dive, surface, move forward, and sustain life beneath the ocean surface? Prepare to dive deep into the world of submarines and discover their fascinating mechanics. To understand submarines, one must first grasp the fundamentals of buoyancy and pressure. Buoyancy is the force that makes things float. It's a battle between gravity, trying to pull objects down, and the buoyant force pushing them up. When an object is placed in water, it displaces a certain amount of that water. If the weight of the water displaced is greater than the weight of the object, it floats. If not, it sinks. But here's the interesting part. Submarines use this principle to their advantage. They have special tanks called ballast tanks that can be filled with water to increase the submarine's weight, making it sink. When it's time to surface, the water is pumped out of these tanks, decreasing the submarine's weight and allowing it to float back up. It's a clever manipulation of the principle of buoyancy. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, or should I say the whale in the ocean, pressure. The deeper you go underwater, the greater the pressure. This is because water is much denser than air, and every 10 meters you descend, the weight of the water above you increases by about one atmosphere. Submarines are built to withstand this immense pressure. Their hulls are constructed from thick, high-strength steel, capable of resisting the crushing force of the water. The shape of the submarine, cylindrical with rounded ends, also plays a critical role in distributing the pressure evenly, preventing any localized stress points that could lead to a catastrophic failure. However, pressure is not just a challenge for submarines, it's also a tool. They use the pressure difference between the inside and outside of the submarine to control their depth. By adjusting the amount of air and water in their ballast tanks, they can fine-tune their buoyancy to hover at a specific depth. These two principles lay the groundwork for the operation of every submarine. So, the next time you see a submarine gracefully gliding through the depths, remember the unseen forces of buoyancy and pressure working in harmony to make it all possible. So, how does a submarine dive and resurface at will? Well, this intricate underwater ballet is all about balance. The star of this performance? The submarine's ballast tanks. These are large compartments within the submarine that can be filled with water or air to adjust the vessel's buoyancy, its ability to float or sink. When a submarine prepares to dive, the ballast tanks are opened. This allows seawater to rush in and fill the tanks. As the tanks fill with water, the submarine becomes denser than the surrounding seawater. You could say it's a bit like eating a big meal and feeling heavy afterwards. The heavier, or denser, the submarine gets, the deeper it dives. Now, what about when the submarine needs to surface? Remember, it's all about balance. To rise back to the surface, the submarine needs to become less dense than the water around it. This is where the ballast tanks come back into play. Instead of being filled with water, they're filled with air. Compressed air is pumped into the tanks, pushing the water out through the bottom. This makes the submarine lighter, and it begins to rise. Think of it this way. Imagine you're holding a balloon underwater. If you let go of the balloon, it shoots up to the surface. That's because the air inside the balloon is lighter than the water around it. A submarine works on a similar principle. This dance of diving and surfacing is a crucial part of a submarine's operation. It requires careful control and precision. Too much water in the ballast tanks, and the submarine could dive too deep. Too little water and it might not dive deep enough. The same goes for surfacing. It's a delicate dance and the submarine's crew must be trained to perform it perfectly. The dance of diving and surfacing is all thanks to the clever use of ballast tanks. This dance allows submarines to navigate the depths of the ocean, exploring places that are otherwise unreachable. It's a testament to human ingenuity and a fascinating part of how submarines work. A submarine's ability to move forward is just as crucial as its ability to dive and surface. Let's delve into the workings of a submarine's propulsion system. This mechanism is the heart of a submarine's mobility, empowering these vessels to glide smoothly through the ocean's depths. The type of propulsion system a submarine uses can vary, but they all serve the same purpose, to drive the submarine forward. At the heart of this system, we typically find either diesel engines or nuclear power. Diesel submarines, which were more common in the earlier days of submarine technology, use diesel engines to turn the propellers. These engines burn diesel fuel to produce power, 
which is then transformed into mechanical energy that moves the propellers. However, these submarines need to surface frequently to replenish their air supply and vent exhaust gases. On the other hand, nuclear-powered submarines offer a more modern and efficient method of propulsion. These submarines utilize nuclear reactors that generate immense amounts of heat. This heat is used to produce steam, which then drives the turbine engines. The turbines in turn spin the vessel's propellers, propelling the submarine through the water. The key advantage of nuclear power is its ability to allow submarines to remain submerged for extended periods, often months at a time, without needing to surface for air or fuel. But how do these propellers actually move the submarine forward? Well, it's all about the push and pull of water. As the propellers spin, they push water backwards. According to Newton's third law of motion, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The water pushes back against the propellers with equal force, but in the opposite direction. This reaction propels the submarine forward. So, whether it's a diesel engine chugging away or a nuclear reactor humming with energy, the propulsion system of a submarine is a fascinating blend of physics and engineering. It's a marvel that these massive underwater vessels can move so gracefully and efficiently through the water, all thanks to the power of their propulsion systems. The power that drives a submarine forward is a marvel of engineering. Living underwater for extended periods demands a sophisticated life support system. If you've ever wondered how crews survive in the isolation of a submarine's belly, here's your answer. Submarines can stay underwater for months, but humans still need to breathe. This is where oxygen generation comes into play. A submarine's life support system includes an advanced electrolytic oxygen generator, which splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is then circulated in the submarine, while the hydrogen is vented outside. But what about the carbon dioxide we exhale? It can't just accumulate, as that would be harmful. So, submarines use a chemical process involving absorbent canisters filled with substances like lithium hydroxide or amine granules. When air is passed through these canisters, they absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen back into the environment. Now let's talk about electricity. Submarines generate their own power through nuclear reactors or diesel-electric engines. Nuclear-powered submarines can operate for decades without refueling, and they convert steam from the reactor into mechanical energy to produce electricity. Diesel-electric submarines, on the other hand, run on batteries when submerged and recharge using diesel engines when surfaced. Fresh water is another essential resource for the crew. Submarines use a device called an evaporator to convert seawater into fresh water. It works by boiling seawater under a vacuum. This allows the water to boil at a lower temperature, saving energy. The steam is then condensed back into water and treated before it's fit for consumption or for other uses like cooling equipment. So, as you can see, submarines are more than just vessels for underwater exploration or defense. They're self-contained habitats that provide everything a crew needs to survive. They generate their own air to breathe, scrub out harmful gases, create electricity, and even convert seawater into fresh water. Submarines are not just machines, they are self-sustaining habitats. In the pitch-black depths of the ocean, submarines need a special tool to navigate. Now, imagine you're in a place that's pitch black, where the sun's rays can't reach, and you have to find your way. Sounds tricky, doesn't it? That's the kind of environment submarines operate in. But don't worry, they're not wandering blindly through the deep. They have a superpower, the sonar system. Sonar stands for sound navigation and ranging. It's a technology that uses sound waves to map the submarine's surroundings. Here's how it works. The submarine sends out a sound wave, which travels through the water until it hits an object. The object could be a school of fish, another vessel, or the ocean floor. Once the sound wave hits something, it bounces back to the submarine. The time it takes for the sound wave to return gives the crew an idea of the distance to the object. If the echo returns quickly, the object is close. If it takes longer, the object is further away. By sending out many sound waves in different directions, the sonar system can create a detailed map of the submarine's surroundings. So, even in the darkest, deepest parts of the ocean, submarines can navigate safely and effectively. It's like having a set of underwater eyes that can see through the darkness. Through the sonar system, submarines find their way in the deep. 